Okay, praise God, praise God, praise God. Today, uh, the Lord wants to speak to us about prayer. Amen. Prayer. Do you know that God knows everything that you need? Watch this. Here's the catch. Before you even ask, before you even ask, he knows what you need. My God. You guys, I want you guys to know the heart of God. He knows what you need before you ask. And so God is concerned about everything that involves you. There is no, there is nothing too little for God. It's not like you say, oh, that's too little for me. You know, I don't want to hear about it. You see, that's not the type of father we have. The type of father we have is a father that says, I know everything about you. I know everything about you. I know how many hairs is on your head. Do you guys know that? He knows how many hairs on your head. <laughs> the ones that are remaining. <laughs> and the ones that used to be there. <laughs> He knows everything. So we serve a God who is omniscient. Hallelujah. But still, even though God knows what you need, he still wants you to come and ask. Wow. Isn't that something? Why? What is he looking for? He's looking for relationship. He's looking for relationship. Yes, he knows what we need, but he still wants us to come and ask because there's something about conversation. In a conversation, there's intimacy. You know, I want us to go to the scriptures. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. From verse 7 and the Bible and it reads ask and it shall be given to you seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you for everyone that ask receiveth are you part of that everyone <laughs> or you are AI or a ro ro robot. Everyone that asks what? Receiveth. This is the words of Jesus. And he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Hallelujah. And it says, Or what man is there of you whom if his son ask bread, Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that what? Ask. Today, God wants you to ask. He wants you to get into the business of asking. Don't be afraid to come and ask. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When we go to Matthew chapter 6, what is it that you need today? The Lord wants you to ask. Ask him. And ask and believe that he'll do it for you. Don't come and ask and then doubt and say, oh, I don't even know if he heard me. <laughs> I want you to ask and believe. Today, believe in your heart that what you ask the Lord, he will grant it. He, you have to know the heart of God, that he is already, he's anticipating to answer you. Amen. He's anticipating to give you the desires of your heart. The Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. 
God wants to grant your request. He's your father. He loves to give good gifts to you. So he wants you to come believing. The devil will try to get us to doubt. And this is where we get in trouble, you guys, by doubting. Ah, uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't have asked, you know, or maybe I'm asking too much. You know, <laughs> the devil say, well, oh, you're asking too much. You're asking too much. No, there's no, nothing is too much for God. He, he wants us to ask, because why? We are his children. For those of you that are parents, you know how you love your son, your daughter. Yoda, you know how you, you love this little boy here. <laughs> you want to give him the world. How much more our father? You want to give her the world, right? This is the heart of God. Of course, you, you're giving your son so much. This is the heart of God. This is the heart of God. He says, you have children. Don't you know how much you want to give to them? And he says, this is my heart towards you. This is my heart towards you. This is my heart towards you. I want to give you good things. So when the devil comes and lies to you and says, oh, you know, God doesn't want you to have this, or he doesn't want you to have that, oh, don't ask that, oh, it's not going to happen. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You have to know who God is. He says, you have children and you want to give good gifts to them. That, that heart came from me, God is saying. That, that, that uh, love to give good things to your children, that came from me. Because I'm the originator of everything. I'm the father of fathers. I'm the mother of mothers. <laughs> the Lord is like a mother to us too. He says, I want to give you the desires of your heart. Today, I want you to know, don't be afraid to ask. He's not mean. The Lord is not mean. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, we see from verse 5, Jesus teaches the disciples how to pray. He says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So the Lord is not looking for a religious prayer. Oh, thou all the king james words O thou of the highly expeditious i don't know you just make up words the lord doesn't care how many king james words you know or how fancy your prayer is he wants relationship he wants you to speak to him from your heart from your heart from your heart. He's after your heart. Hallelujah. He's after your heart. And then he says, verse 6, But thou, when you prayest, enter into thy closet. He said, it's, it's between me and you. It's me and you. Me and you. It's private. Talk to me from your heart. Enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, Pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And when you pray, use not vain repetitions. Don't get churchy on God. Don't get impressive on God. He says, don't use these vain repetitions. The key word there is vain. You see, your words must have meaning to the Lord. Your words must have connection. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Your words must have meaning. He says, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do. Verse 7. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Then he says in verse 8, Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you need before you ask. Hallelujah. He knows what you need before you ask. Then there's the, the, the famous prayer that we all know. After this manner, what does manner mean? It means, here's an example. After this manner, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So when you come to God, come to him first with an attitude of worship, thanksgiving. Thank the Lord first for the things that he already has given you before you ask him for more. Right? Would you like it if someone, you gave someone something and next time he comes and asks you again, but then he didn't thank you for the one you've already given. Wouldn't that make you like, what? You're not grateful. You come to God with an attitude of gratitude. Say, Lord, thank you for all that you've done for me. It says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And then verse 14 says, For if you forgive men their trespass, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespass, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespass. Unforgiveness is will block your prayers from being answered. These are one of the things that will stop your prayers from being answered by God. Because God cares about how you treat people. He cares about your heart towards other people. If you're, on, if you're not willing to forgive other people, God says, don't even ask me for anything. First, I want you to forgive those that have done you wrong. Why? Because he says, because I've forgiven you. Why should I forgive you and you not forgive others? He says, because I've forgiven you of your sins, I want you to do the same for others. And then he says, I'll give you, I'll grant you your request. God's heart today is that he says, I'm, I'm ready. I'm a father that is ready to grant you your request. So what is it that you need from the Lord? And then after you've asked him, you start thanking him. By faith, you say, God, I know this is coming. Thank you. I, I'm expecting it. You know, it's kind of like when you, you order something online. Like, you know it's coming. Even though it's not there, right there instantly, you know it's coming. You ordered it. That's how prayer is. You've already put in your order. You've already asked. So now you're excited, you're expecting, ooh, I'm excited, it's coming. Ooh, yes, God is bringing it, is bringing it. I know it's coming. And finally, bam, that UPS angel comes and says, delivery for Chris, delivery. <laughs> I know, right? Delivery uh, package for uh, Gilda, package. Uh, you ordered this um, two weeks ago, and here Angel Gabriel, Gabriel is delivering it. Um, hallelujah. That's how it works. So once you've asked, the Lord says, you have to already know that I want to give it to you. And now you just, you're expecting, you're expecting, and you're grateful, and you're thanking him. Lord, thank you. Whoo! 
you even start telling people ah, my package is coming yeah yeah that uh that thing it's coming oh yeah yeah call me when it comes yeah i want us to uh uh, play the video game or whatever, whatever. Yeah, call, see, that's called faith. Amen. So this is how your prayer needs to be with God. You need to know the heart of God. He wants to give you good things. He says, everyone that asks receiveth. Is he a liar? No. Everyone that asks receiveth. So just put in your order and wait for it. Wait for it with excitement. Yes, it's coming. Woo! Thank you, Lord, for my healing. Oh, yeah, I still feel a little pain, but yes, thank you, Jesus, for my healing. I put in my order, and I know it's coming. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, that my son is a preacher. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I put in my order, and I know it's coming. Thank you, Jesus. For that money in the mail, checks in the mail, the zeal, <laughs> whatever it is that you're. Thank you, Lord, for that job. Yes, I thank you that is coming. Put in your order. That's what the Lord is saying today. Put in your order. Ask. Ask me. Hallelujah. Ask me and you'll receive. Glory to God. And it's, if it's not things that you want, then he said, seek, seek me and you'll find me. Some things you got to look for, right? Some things you got to look for, because after asking, some things you got to look for. It doesn't just come to you. Sometimes you got to go online and <laughs> do some searching. <laughs> Where is this thing at? And then there, they'll call you. Like, come on in, we're going to interview for you, or I don't know, whatever. Some things you got to look for. Seek, and you shall find. Everyone that seeks, find. Some things you got to knock for. You got to be persistent. I don't care how many no's I get. No. Okay? Try again. No. Okay, try again. No. Finally. Yes. We want you. Come on in. Woo! That's how it works. Knock and the door shall be open. Who knocks one time? No. <laughs> no. A knock is a couple of times. Some things you got to knock. You got to be persistent. You got to keep going. You got to keep going. You got to keep trying. You get up. You try again. You get up. You try again. You get up. You try again. Who was it? Was it... Uh, Edison, is it Edison that did the lights? He said he tried so many times before he finally succeeded. What was he doing? He was knocking. He was knocking because he, he, he just knew that it would work. He just kept knocking. Imagine if he would have stopped, let's say if it was the, the thousandth time and he stopped at the 99. <laughs> I mean, oh. We'll still have candles. We'll be having candles everywhere. <laughs> Some things you got to knock for. Because it's not coming easy, but it doesn't mean that you can't have it. You know, some career paths requires persistence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to keep knocking, keep knocking, keep going after it. And so today, this is the heart of the Lord. I am with you. I want you to have it. But you have a part to play. And your part is you got to believe and you have to receive. You have to find and the door will be opened. Glory to God. There was a woman, I think she was a, she was a baron. I forgot her name. She had Samuel in the Bible. Hannah? Okay, Hannah. Oh, she really wanted a child, but she was barren. 
So she was persistent. What was that? That's knocking. Oh, she stayed in the house of the Lord. I mean, she, she, oh. She persisted. Lord, give me a child. And she got God's attention. And uh, the Lord did it. The Lord gave her a child because she persisted. She persisted. As a matter of fact, there's a scripture I want us to read. Luke chapter 18. Knock and the door shall be open. Luke chapter 18. Amen. When he comes, shall he find faith on the earth? You know what the faith is? It says by her continual coming. Verse 5. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. Lest by her continual coming. That's how you knock. You're persistent. You keep going. You keep going. You don't give up. You're persistent. And eventually, that door opens for you. Hallelujah. That door opens for you. Knock and the door shall be opened. Seek and you shall find. Ask and you shall receive. You have a heavenly father that's ready to give you the world. There's nothing too big, nothing too little for God to give to you because you're the apple of his eye and he loves you. Last Sunday was Father's Day and by the powerful message, you know, I'll, I'll post that on YouTube, you guys, so you guys can listen to it. But we saw how God loves us so much. And that the Bible says that if we were to count the, the sand, that his thoughts towards us is like the sand. You guys ever went and counted the sand? <laughs> the sand? <laughs> he says he's always thinking about you. His thoughts towards you is like the sand of, like the sand. Oh my gosh, that'll take forever to count, to count the sands. He's always thinking about you. So you see, he wants you to have good things. He wants to bless you. He wants you to be healed. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to flourish. He wants you to be victorious. He wants you to have that career, to have that job, to have that family, whatever it is that's in your heart, God wants to give it to you. This is his heart today. This is his heart. Amen. Oh, when he comes, will he find faith? When the UPS angel comes, <laughs> will he find faith? And he rings that doorbell. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm ready to receive. Take a moment right now and just put in your request, put in your order, whatever it is that you want for the Lord. And then just be expectant. Know that it's on its way. Hallelujah, it's on its way because God's word is true. Ask and you'll receive. So, Lord, I'm asking in the name of Jesus. And you know, just like in the natural, they have what's called express mail, express delivery. You know, there's regular delivery, five to seven days, business days. And then there's express overnight delivery. But for overnight delivery or express delivery, you have to pay more. <laughs> You've got to pay more. You got to pay a price. And I'm going to give you a secret. 
I'm going to give you a secret. The secret for express mail is waking up at midnight and praying. Let me show you guys in the Bible. You know, the Bible is full of mysteries. Luke chapter 11. You can speed up your delivery by paying a greater price in prayer, of course. Sacrifice your sleep. We all love that sleep, huh? Does that sleep, doesn't it feel good? <laughs> it feels good, that bed. <laughs> Especially if you have the extra soft bed, the pillow. My God. <laughs> Sometimes sleep is better than food. <laughs> when you're tired, like, like I just want to sleep. I'll eat later. But I tell you, when you sacrifice that sleep to watch, Jesus calls it watch. Watch is when you pray, is night prayer. When you sacrifice that sleep for God, it speeds up your order, your delivery. Luke chapter 11, verse 5. All men are created equal, but all time are not created equal. <laughs> we'll say that again. All men are created equal, but all time is not created equal. There are certain times of the day and night in which God has ordained for things to accelerate. And for prayers to accelerate, between 12 and 3 a.m. This is called third watch prayer. So I'm giving you a little nugget. It says here in verse five, it says, and he said unto him, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him when? When did it say? At midnight. Oh, but that sleep is so good. <laughs> but if you want that express mail, Express delivery, that's the price. That's the price. You get up at midnight, you start praising God. Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you can pray in the spirit, you start praying in the spirit. And you're blessing the Lord. And your delivery is speeding up. It's speeding up. It's speeding up. And he gets there earlier than expected. Whew. Glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. At midnight. Amen. So what is it that you want from the Lord? Are you willing to pay the price for express mail? Express answer prayer? Get up at midnight. God's heart is that he wants to grant your request. So just Put in your order and give him praise. Hallelujah. The UPS angel is coming. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's the God we serve. He's your father. Amen. You're blessed today. Amen. Let's, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. That's the word of the Lord for us today. Praise the Lord. Anybody need prayer for anything? There's a, if you need healing in your body, there's something you're asking God for. Whatever you need prayer for, at this time, you can come up and uh, I'll pray for you. And then we're going to close. We're going to dismiss. Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you all for coming.
And you know, I want to, um, there's this book called Face to Face Appearance from Jesus. I don't know if you, you record this as well, you guys. Uh, it's recording. There's this book, it's called Face to Face Appearance from Jesus. Uh, written by my spiritual father, David E. Taylor. So this book is not just the regular book. This book has a promise that comes with it. Now, when David E. Taylor was writing this book, Jesus appeared to him and told him, everyone that reads this book, I will appear to them. I will appear to them. And I've read this book, you guys, and Jesus appeared to me. I saw the Lord. I saw Jesus. He came to me in my dreams. <laughs> and so, I want to encourage you to get this book. Chris, I'm, I'll give you one. It's a, that's my gift to you. And... You're welcome to have one too. Well, I mean, it's also an audio. It's also an audio. You can get it on Amazon or you go to joshuamediaministries.org. But I want you to see Jesus. I want you to get a closer relationship with the Lord. Just like how Jesus appeared to Paul Today, he still shows up. We can see him. We can see him. He's beautiful. Beautiful man. Jesus is beautiful. Hallelujah. You know, I've danced with the Lord before. <laughs> Anyways, God is good. So if anybody needs prayer, you can come up.